Well, welcome to another Radical Retro Rewind podcast. Do you feel those vibes coming through from us? I think I do. That, of course, is my brother David, my co-host, 1988's vibe starring Cindy Lauper and Jeff Goldblum. This was actually suggested by Joseph. Hello, Joseph. Thank you so much for recommending this. I am so excited about this. We had another listener, Jeanette, actually suggest Ruthless People, which I absolutely adore, and Vibes. I actually love this movie. Both of those movies I actually have on DVD. But yeah, I'm really excited about Vibes. This is right up your alley. Really. This is truly... So I have always loved this movie. Mm -hmm. Where do I start with this? So everyone knows that Goonies, everyone pretty much knows Goonies, right? If they don't, they've heard of Goonies. We know that Cyndi Lauper was on the soundtrack to Goonies. For some reason in my mind, ever since the day I watched Goonies, I always affiliated Goonies with Cyndi Lauper because the song good enough goonies are good enough well the video too i mean and the video always i always feel like she's the unofficial goonie she's a goonie (laughs) and i always when i started watching vibes again after all this time i just immediately felt really like in my happy place my childhood happy place and thinking of cindy lopper cindy loppers is the goonies you know what i mean so like i don't know if that makes sense to anybody but i like totally was vibing ha 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 but totally vibing on the fact that i got that kind of special feeling i don't know you know, like, oh, wow, this is vibes. And actually, I'm actually impressed with Cindy Lauper's acting. I don't know if anybody else I thinks agree. so. I Just agree. like when we talked about, like, with Bette Midler. She's a really good actress. I, I have to say, if you compare Cindy Lauper, and I'm, this is not to downgrade Madonna by any means, but if you take Cindy Lauper in this movie and you go to even, I won't even do Desperately Seeking Susan. I'll say something like, who's that girl? Cindy Lauper, honestly, is more of a natural actress to me I'd or she can just do it i don't know she could just i'd be interested in what she thinks about that but she's well she's, 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 she's a trip but i loved i love this movie thank you joe for suggesting it actually makes me really excited that people are suggesting things that we can do when we can you know oh i'm so happy about that and it's one that we actually enjoy so i saw this a few years ago i didn't see it back in the 80s i saw it like late 90s and to david's point you could almost say it's like a spiritual sequel to the goonies because it's a venture movie and there is a treasure involved so Cindy Lauper who evidently was with the Goonies in their music video was <laughs> Captain Lou Albat wasn't he in there too Captain Lou was that just I, I, wasn't that girls, girls just want to have fun <laughs> Captain but, Lou but I did I get that as soon as the movie started I got that feeling again I don't know how to describe it like Goonies Indiana Jones Cindy Lauper 80s f- <laughs> feeling which is a really Magic. nice feeling to have I would love to have it all the time because Nostalgia. it's just a really fun it's just it, it hits you in the pit of your stomach it's almost like if you ever had the feeling when you've watched a series like let's say charm that last episode when they're showing the pictures on the wall and the you know grams who is now piper's now grams is closing the book and this and that all this stuff and you just get like a almost like a sense of like i don't want to say loss but almost like in the pit of like your chest like you tighten up and you almost feel like oh my god this is it or or you it's a beautiful but yeah yeah, it's a sad but beautiful feeling well the feeling i had with the with the vibes is completely different it's actually a happy joyful that other feeling is almost like a almost like a sadness in a way like a like a loss or something in a way but also satisfied so i don't know but yeah vibes really made me vibe for it the touches 80s. your heart i guess is what yeah. the easiest way to say it there is a bright colorful i guess motif and in general with this movie it's a ve- it's a happy movie i mean there's they're dealing with serious plot i i say serious in a very light manner but you know but it's a happy movie all together and i would love to see them redo this movie even though i don't like remakes mm-hmm. i thought about it for a little while and i don't think she's an, really an actress so to speak but at maybe like 10 years ago I would have loved to have had like see like a Gwen Stefani or something. Well, she looks this honestly. She but like that kind of vibe because I can see her with when she used to have the little bindi on her. You know, very like she could pull it off, but at the same time, I don't know if she's a great actress. Everyone says that she is a great actress because she's really not with her man mm-hmm. and she's acting. But a matter of uh, fact, I, I heard digress. she bought her ring, but. <laughs> I would have given him the receipt. Yeah, you're getting something from this too. Honestly, Gwen, I I like that idea. I think she was in a movie. Wasn't she in a movie with the great Gatsby or something? But like that kind of, you know, because maybe because of the tie with music and different things. But let me also say, Cindy Lauper has some body on her in this movie. Yeah, she's body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. Not in a traditional, she's never been like, she always describes herself. She's unusual, but she's a beautiful woman and she does look fantastic in these outfits and 
this movie. Yes, definitely. Very nanny fine. I love it. Yes. I love it. Oh my God, Fran Drescher. That's what we sound like all the time. Mr. Sheffield. Mr. Sheffield. That sounds like Stifler's mom. I want a hot dog real bad. <laughs> I gotta say, David, this is the longest intro with just flutes and men walking through trains looking for treasure. But it's a lo it's like literally five minutes full of, it's of like just a, it's, and it's in South America, music. right? Is it where where are they? Are they, they are in Ecuador. Did they actually film that in Ecuador? Because the cinematography is actually pretty, like really pretty. You know, some of these like Peru, Ecuador, they're beautiful countries. They're just beautiful. If you can get past the five minutes. I promise this movie is hysterical and then it goes pretty much fast paced after that. And oh my god, you're talking about the flute and the music totally brings me back to again, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a shout out to Natural Wonders. Natural Wonders used to have that selection of CDs from Retro. Enya to, Retro. The, to the to the Gypsy Kings to uh all these other Was like, Enya of course included. Enya, that. there was Enya, there was Mary Black, there was the women of world Celtic or Celtic or Oh the Celtic women. <laughs> the Celtic women. And, and these flutes things there was these flutes <laughs> Do, 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 do. There I love must be it. something to it, though. It's that healing. added to the ambiance of the thing with the flute playing. I felt like I was there. I don't know. Maybe yeah, you felt crazy. you were there because you were walked five minutes with these people, like through there, like <laughs> walking and walking and walking and searching and walking <laughs> and flutes and not even conversation, just walking. But we should say that Lopper plays Sylvia. Pickel. Sylvia. Pickel? Sylvia. I'm Sylvia Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Like, I'm Sylvia Pickles. Didn't she say that in the movie too? She's like, but she, it, yes, it's a part when she introduces herself to someone. It's Pickel. All right, Miss Pickle. Pickel, Doctor Whiny. Whiner. Sorry. She's a trans medium who has contact with a wisecracking spirit guy named Louise. Now, this is not Louise from the Teen Witch. <laughs> Louise. But she. she <laughs> She begins communicating with Louise after falling from a ladder at the age of 12, remaining comatose for two weeks. <laughs> so, David, you've... I, gonna... I got hit in the head with a hammer at 12, but I didn't see anything but a bump on my face. You went through it. He got burnt by a heater. Broken collarbone off of a... Off I broke his toe, possibly chasing him at some point. Uh, the top of his... The, the thing that connects <laughs> your lip to your, like... <laughs> Assault oh on me. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. This is... I'm uh... just waiting for my... Revenge. I know what you did last summer and the summer before that and all 20, 30, 40 of them. Subconsciously, Lee's taught herself astral projection while Sylvia has was placed in special homes for being different. At a study of psychic, she meets fellow psychic Nick Deasy, who is played by Jeff Goldblum. And oh. he can determine the history of events surrounding an object by touching it. Sylvia has a history of bad luck with men and her ovary over flirtatious behavior turns Nick <laughs> off right away so this her is ovaries he said her ovaries turned him off not her ovaries <laughs> we we go to a place called hara dash normal office where they are testing psychics to start this off so we see do you know who i realized who one of the men is actually turns out to be one of the antagonists is this actor they say look like baby huey you know this guy do you remember on charmed when phoebe turned spencer ricks into a turkey the rival columnist who was like a sexist yes. chauvinist this is is that guy from Charm. So that's the only okay. thing else that I know him from. But he Still plays a, okay. a psychic slash crook, I guess. But he's from like a, Russia? a Slavic country Slavic. or something like that. Or Poland. We set up Jeff Goldblum's character. He always plays like a An intellectual person. Oh, definitely intellectual. Intellectual. Slightly sarcastic. Slightly sarcastic or... Yes. Slight, oh, not even sarcastic. It's just that he plays these intellectuals. It's just the way he interacts with people. What I will say, though, he is a little bit snarky with Sylvia, with Cindy Lauper's character. In this but is it of, because he's attracted to her at this point, possibly? You, you mean like the little boy at the playground throwing the rocks at the girl mm -hmm. or hitting her because he really likes her? Maybe. Maybe. Kind of. But she probably. tells him during this, because they have a little lunch after all the psychics are tested, and they're sitting around a table 
people. And Sylvia, Cindy Lauper, is talking to Louise, her spirit guide, and Louise is judging her a lot, like what she's eating. And she goes to Jeff Goldblum after she's talking to herself. Like, it doesn't count, right? If you fast, like the calories don't count. And he's like, who are you talking to? She's like, you. They but then he count. asks before, unfortunately. They do count. In that little scene, I find him, I don't know, I find him so likable. His character's very likable in this movie. Because he's kind of like, I guess his Jeff Goldblum-esque self. A little neurotic, a little nervous over everything. A little Jurassic Park, a little bit The Fly. It's a little, you know, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little bit of Gina Davis in my Ooh. life. <laughs> So that's what we get with him. But we find that his power, David, is if he holds an object, he can basically get a, a vision from <laughs> the object. So he could see where a, of a murder Where it's place. been, what, and he actually has a vision of the actual scene. So this could be really interesting depending on what you're touching. Well, I do love this. He says, I won't be able to sleep tonight. Like, he's very <laughs> like... That would be you. He, it's very cute. Oh, definitely. If you had that power, you'd be like that. that. Oh my god, I can't sleep tonight. Oh, I, would, I don't want to see no dead people, please. Leaves. No people getting murdered, but that's we set up that he can touch things. He holds it at his job at a museum. They want him to touch everything. There's a mummy. They want him to get the exact year, the date, the information just by touching, which is a cool concept. Truthfully, it really would work out very well in so many ways. Hell, it could work out at Walmart if you're returning a package. <laughs> I know that you stole this, or this didn't come from our store, even though there's labels on it. <laughs> I see it. I see this at TJ Maxx. <gasps> <laughs> How dare you? I see you had this product in your house for two years and just put it into a new box. Sounds like something that Bed Bath & Beyond would have taken back. Oh, now they don't God, take back yeah. anything. Well, their, their, their stores are closing, unfortunately. I hope the one of the block for me doesn't because I haven't been there yet. Plus, I don't want people to lose their jobs, obviously, but that was one of my fantasies. Like, when you made it when you lived near a Bed Bath & Beyond and you just <laughs> there. Back in the day, it was. <laughs> Please listen to our podcast so I can shop at Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> You too, with just with just fifty cents a day, you too can support David. <laughs> a can opener is like thirty five dollars, and it's a cheap one. Jeff Goldblum says that she's fabulous, her powers, and she says she's been told that before, but then they never call afterwards. The men comedic timing is good with her too. She's so funny, and she's so Long Island, so New York, so Staten Island. Right. Well, we'll get. Yeah, but it. we're gonna go with all right. All right, we we need to set this up because people are like, "What is this about? Is this movie about Bed Bath and Beyond? What is this?" <laughs> Psychics and Bed Bath and & Beyond. <laughs> and possibly Pickles, I don't know. The characters are psychics. We set up there's a scientist who's doing the investigation, and Cindy Lauper kind of finds him hot, but to be honest, she finds every man attractive that she comes in contact with. She is the quintessential, again, heart of gold, gets taken advantage of by every man. Like, she always picks the wrong guy, and, and, and it seems like, so once they establish that they're psychics, once they establish there's this very attractive, well, supposed to be very attractive. I don't supposed really, to be. I don't find the actor, no offense because he's a nice looking man, but he's not, I don't find him. He's very, whatever. He's, there's a, what's his name? Dr. Silverman or something? It's something like that. Silverman, Silverman. So there's a doctor, quote unquote a doctor, who is spearheading this uh, group trying to find out the best psychics and he wants to use them for, to find some artifacts or something that you, you really don't hear about the actual details. Dr. Steel. Dr. Steel. Okay, so silver, steel. And stealing. Mm. So he has these people together, he tests them out, and he gets the cream of the crop of psychic people. Which turn out to be Jeff Goldblum and, and Cindy. And then this other guy... This, the, Although he gets name? gets things wrong a, a few of the thing. His name is You just want to call him Ingo? like Ingo Ingo Swedlin. You you just wanna you just wanna call him the the boy from the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh my god, it. yeah, Augustus Gloop. You just want to call him Augustus Gloop, but anyway. I like this. Cindy actually says to him, What's your problem? Aside from your face. <laughs> it's terrible. And she <laughs> says to Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> You touch things. I, I just love the way she just, like, symbolizes things with this. <laughs> <laughs> You touch things. You touch things, you know? Everyone wants him to touch things. Maybe that's the reason why we like the movie so much, because we are just like that. Honestly, this this actually is right up our alley. We talk like this on tour. You have, you've have you had some guests on this show, and I want to say to them, in fact, if I ever get a chance to do a crossover with some of your other guests with you, I'm going to say to them, you talk so eloquently, what are you doing with us, too? <laughs> <laughs> 
You talk so well, Sylvia. You touch things. You touch things. You so you anyway, she her. does tell. So they're having a luncheon. They're going to start before they're going to leave. The doctor, Dr. Steele, Steel. approaches them about being part of some sort of a, a thing that he's doing. Sylvia says that Louise told her that Jeff Goldblum's Nick girlfriend is cheating on him. And he's yes. like, no, that can't be. That can't be. And he starts to panic. But the thing about this is that this would be, you and I could never have this ability to touch things because I would be just, I'm like this without touching, without having the ability to touch <laughs> things and see things. Everything's dirty, like we're OCD a little bit. And like the, the pandemic, here's the funny thing. So I was talking to our brother, our, our older brother. Older brother, that's right. Um, The older one than me. <laughs> that's right. Um, and he was dreams. saying that he, he was saying that his partner used to make fun of him for, you know, being so like thorough with cleaning and like hand sanitizer and stuff before the pandemic. So then in our family true fashion, he goes back and says, see, I was right the whole time. I set you up for, for success and to be clean and safe in this environment that we're living in now, pandemic. I prepared you for the, the upcoming pandemic before it happened because I have been... <laughs> teaching you to sanitize everything constantly. So if you have the ability to touch something and see if it's really dirty, would you like never drink out of a cup again if I have other people when you oh, go to a restaurant? Oh, forget it. At a or restaurant? The, or the person at McDonald's didn't wipe their, wash their hands properly or something after going to the bathroom and they hand you a, a cup or food? I would never eat again. Oh my god, that's perfect. I'd be thin. So yeah, so Sylvia tells them that, that Louise said that Nick's girlfriend is cheating. They both are going into cabs in New York yeah, City. Separate, New York. separately too. He doesn't believe her. He doesn't believe her. But Sylvia gets home. And gets this home is late. actually a great scene. This is a great scene. She comes home from her apartment one night to find Harry lounging in her kitchen. So she grabs a shotgun that she has from a boyfriend. And she says, Louise, Louise, let's kick ass. And she knocks the door open. Louise, let's kick ass. All right, Freddie, you're a dead... I love this. I love this. And she's got a shotgun in her head and P Peter Falk, is that his name? Peter Falk, yes. Peter, Peter Falk, Falk, who is also Columbo, who is also... Columbo, the, yes. The grandfather, in many parts. The grandfather in The Princess Bride telling the story. He's many parts, many parts. So Peter Falk is actually going through her refrigerator. And Eating. She got, the shot, yeah. she got the shotgun on him. And she's like, who are you? Or whatever. And he claims he wants to hire her for $50,000 if she'll accompany him to Ecuador where his son is allegedly gone missing. Wait a minute. Did you, did you write down the part when he's like, why do you have a shotgun? She's like, when you go out with a man named Killer or something, she's yes. like, get on that. Yes. <laughs> Well, Steve Buscemi was one of her dates actually earlier, who used her just to get winning horse racing, was it? Yeah, yeah. And she said, Louise, please, he's changed. I'm lonely. She wants oh Louise God. the spirit guide to get the winning numbers for her, and she does. Would you do that? I would do that for myself and keep afloat. Maybe I wouldn't, like, try to rob, but I would also be a philanthropist. I would give money to charities and stuff that I believe in and different things. I guess it would be kind of cheating the system, but, I mean, if you I mean, did you see where she Well, she lived? went through a coma. She fell through a lot. She went through it to get this. But her character is just like, you could tell she's just this sweet. As a heart of gold. She really yeah. does. She, she really is. Because she wants to help right away. I mean, yes, the money, of course, is something. But when he tells her, her his son is, is missing out in Ecuador, she wants to help for that. And she like went and feels bad yeah. for him. But she recruits Nick, who is reluctant, but also eager to leave his job as a museum curator, where his special talents are abused as a circus act. The, the, the head of the museum has the board members or the, the the people that are funding the museum coming in and he wants them to touch their keys and put on like a like a, a swami hat like you know like um, what's his name used to do Johnny Carson if you know if yes, old Johnny Carson like, stuff like uh, like put on a, a circus act for him because he wants to amuse the shareholders or whatever and Ch obviously, he's chasing after him with the shareholders and he also that. finds that his girlfriend is cheating because he touches her bra when another man was touching her bra and then she says it was her father and He's like, your father is undressing you? And professional baseball player or something like that? Or Oh my god, player? is is the woman, is the woman, is she Audrey from Night of the Comet? She looked like her. She looked like her. She's not the she same, She looks right? exactly like her though, doesn't she? She even has that kind of slightly the, masculine, husky voice kind of vibe same, or whatever. I thought okay. the same thing. There's a scene in an African exhibit with elephants where Sylvia is talking to Nick and she tells him like, she does have astral projection as well and she used to go to the movies to watch movies to astral <laughs> I love this. it's cute it's movies. cute she's like have you ever tried to buy goobas 
<laughs> when you're out of your body or something like that. It's, it's so funny. You know how hard it is to buy goobers when you're out of your body? It's, it's such a playful, childlike, again. Maybe that's why we like these 80s movies, because there's a lot of people, We always, I use the term heart of gold very often. Yes, no, but it's that's true. your word. It's a heart of gold. They get to Ecuador. So now it becomes a trio of the two of them as the psychics and Harry, who is looking for his son. But they get to a hotel, David, right? And it wasn't a La Quinta. It wasn't a La Quinta. It was nice. I love that Jeff's character brought water with him in a suitcase and was drinking it out of a straw. That would have been me. That's a two gallon, made. not even a one gallon. It's a two, it was a two love gallon, the one with the handle. Yeah. I love this part. He's drinking this. When she's getting dressed at one point, she comes in to ask him about like the outfit. And I guess he says something about her bosoms. She's like, mid bosom? You probably say penis to like. <laughs> I love the way you talk. You probably also say penis. <laughs> Because <laughs> he describes her like her alpha. She looks good. Like she's showing off a lot of bosom, and she's she's like bosom. Does he say you? Do you own anything that's not mid? Yes, that's mid buy or something I like that. Bosom. bosom. You probably say penis. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> So once they get there, they initially set out to where Harry's son was last seen, only to have Nick's power tell him that Harry is up to something. Harry confesses that he's actually looking for a lost city of gold in the mountains and that his last partner who discovered it went insane. Nick angrily retreats back to the hotel, <laughs> followed by Sylvia, feels embarrassed over being fooled by yet another man. So there's a part where he's like, he goes, did I say Harry Jr.? I meant Harry Senior. And then she's like, you had, and then um, Cindy Lauper's like, you had to make a fool out of me in front of Louise. Yes, yes. She's like, she feels very, what do you call it, about Louise feeling a certain way about her. Like, respecting her. Because she doesn't get respect. She doesn't get respect. So yes, they go back to the hotel, but... Wow, there's a lot that happens at this hotel. So doesn't Jeff Goldblum at that point, Nick, get some kind of a feeling that... Harry does mention that his friend found the City of Gold. He Did he say he touches touched something and something happened to him? So Nick yes. is actually interested now. There is a... Curiosity? Uh, curiosity that he feels some, some kind of energy or something he's drawn to. So there's make a plan to go to the hospital at some point. But Harry's like, we're here. Let's go drink and have a good time. It's happy hour. Put it, there's a thing I wrote this down. I don't know what line this is about, but shrinking his head and hitting him with sticks. What? <laughs> there was, I don't know what that was about, but I think he said something about the natives, about shrinking his head. And Anyway, when they actually get there, David, I do love that they're walking in the mountains with a llama and they have her leopard bags and suitcases hanging off this llama. And I love the fact she's wearing like a mini cowgirl outfit, like a little <laughs> tiny... Half okay. vest and a cowboy hat kind of a thing. And she looked like this. But this is something I would have done back in the day. Let me tell you something. I actually climbed the mountains in Sedona in go-go boots back in the day. <laughs> That's right. They were they were uh, eggplant, burgundy, go-go boots. You, do you still have those? No, they, I do have some of my older boots, though. While at the hotel at some point, Nick meets a woman. He meets a woman who at first I thought was Maria Conchita. Con but no, she it's not. But she looks familiar to this woman. I don't know. This what woman looks like the woman who... Who, mm, I don't know, but she looked familiar too, yes. At the hotel, Nick is attacked by a woman who tries to drug him and stab him, saying, You think you can come here and take it away from us? Convinced that there is something important, if dangerous, at work, he agrees to trek back into the mountains and search for the lost city. But you're missing a good part! So they were actually having cocktails. He was drinking his water, she was drinking a cocktail, and, and Cindy Lauper has this ingenious idea of getting to find a rich man in, in this country. She's like, go along with it. She's, she's going back and forth with yelling at Nick and she's like oh oh I I just need to know does anybody know if the bar in a what did she say a Rolls Royce something if it goes to the left or the right and of course the man who's wealthy knows he's like you're wrong your your sister is right it goes to the that's right they pretend to be siblings but because she wants to get with this rich guy tonight we should also mention that that other psychic baby Huey he turns up during this and they don't want to give away that they're there for this fortune so they accidentally say that they go here all the time and they change it to they go here all the time but they're gonna go here all the time in the future because they've fallen in love as a cover and they're like why did you come he's like i'm here for a wonderful buffet <laughs> who knew who knew you go all the way to south america for a wonderful buffet so nick is attacked by this woman after he's able to save himself he's worried about sylvia now so he what does he do he even takes a cart he, a he steals cart the cart he steals the cart from the service food services to bring to the hotel room of the 
this very rich person. So and he's going to rescue Sylvia before she's killed by this man. Although this man actually is not trying to kill Sylvia. He hits him. He hits him with something because he thinks he's trying to strangle her. She's like, he's trying to strangle you with this very expensive necklace. <laughs> she's like, I had a meeting out of my hands. Literally, there was crumbs in my hand. Poor Cindy. Isn't that what she said? Something yes, like that? Poor girl. Well, he had a meeting out of my hand. I can't even do it the way she does it. I had that guy eating out of my hand. At this point, we set up, he tried to save her, so she's got a little tingling for him now. But Louise, who knows? So Harry, they get Harry, who looks like he has curlers in his hair or something, right? He looks this like he's is... an old lady. He looks like Edith Bunker from Archie Bunker with a house coat on or something else. He does that too when they're camping, and he's like, do you have to leave these in, like, all night or whatever? Like, they, he always it's like Harry, a, it's yeah, a Harry's weird funny. thing. He's a likable character. Yes, it turns out he tricked them in a way, but everything he does, is funny and, and like he's not mean spirited he just wants to be somebody i think that's what he well we'll find that out later but but also right after this after the attack they make a detour to find harry's former partner who is a vegetable in the hospital a vegetable state i should say in the hospital where nick lays his hands on him and receives a jolt of tremendous psychic energy and the former partner immediately dies lord but then he finds a artifact a piece of stone with some kind of an engraving on it that he can feel energy emanating off the of goonies it, you know? again here we go it's like a face yeah one thing you didn't know, mention was the brunhilde nurse at the nursing station that oh, that wouldn't let them in at first yeah. and she's like this built like a brick house mm -hmm. you know and they end up following and i think at that point louise is like she's not happy louise is like i don't want to don't go to this yes. man's room louise is she's like louise is telling me don't don't go to this room yes no something's not right here and um they end but up he's going drawn. yeah i was gonna say he's drawn to it nick nick is like at some point almost becomes hypnotized or possessed like so He's to speak hypnotized with this. by this place they end up getting this artifact oh my god and the best part is so before this poor man dies harry talks to him he's like i have to tell you something harry i slept with your wife he's like well you know both of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was something. Oh my god. So right after this, they go to the nurse's station, they're leaving, and they meet Sphingo, whatever his name Ingo, is. Ingo, they're set up. Ingo. Expectedly, the three are set up upon by Ingo, another psychic from the test group. He holds them at gunpoint and threatens to kill them, but Sylvia uses Louise to get in touch with his long lost mother, and the group escapes. Well, let me add something. The nurse, he shoots the nurse in the arm, oh, yes. because they're like, there's a witness here, you can't kill us here, and he's like, he has a silent and of course, doesn't Sylvia make a comment? Oh, isn't that so nice? Or some somebody makes it like a, you, you, how thoughtful you have a silencer on the gun yes, in the hospital. Yes. He shoots the nurse in the arm, and then Louise does contact his mother, and she's like, I have a message from your mother. She doesn't want you to do this. And then she starts singing something in his native tongue, some kind of song from his childhood, and he starts singing along with him. The nurse picks up a chair. Again, everything's a weapon. Picks up a chair and smashes him over the head with the chair. And then the Amen. three escape. Amen. And they don't wait. They start going right into the mountains. I was going to say, they begin their journey anew, only to once again be by confronted by Ingo and Dr. Harrison Steele this time. He's involved with the two quote-unquote sexy doctor, the blonde that Cindy wanted earlier. Immediately, Nick is drawn. He has to go to this place. Yes. So he is actually now the driving force. So he has to go to this place they start going they camp out and oh, Cindy Walker tries to put the moves on Nick because he's like well why do you like me she's like well when you helped me you tried to save me I just thought this is a good guy and if I could do anything for him and he's and like, he's like so what just, here right now so, so this is a you're trying to make love to me for charity as a thank you so they start they have a little bit of a quarrel and she starts what did you want me to say I want to live with you in a house on Long Island well you know the way it's coming out uh you're looking for a little action. There's nobody here but me and Harry, and I won. But not by much. Okay. I want you bad, all right? I dream about you and me in a house in Long Island. I'm only half a woman till I make love to you. You happy now? Must we spoil what's been a depraved and embarrassing evening? She does get married. Oh, so good. And then Please, she, let and me then know. and then um, Harry says, "What's wrong, guys?" He comes to him with his curlers. With he's his, got curlers, his and curlers, and he's and... like, "Nick's like Sylvia wanted to sleep with me, but and he said, he's like shocked that he didn't do it." And he's like, "Well, maybe." So yeah, so now she's got him knocking on her door. With no, his he's curlers. like, he's like Sylvia. <laughs> he's gonna try to get her. They kiss, and then she says, "Is it gonna happen again?" And he's like, "I think so." And she's like, "Now." <laughs> 
It was cute. It was cute. It's, I, it's like they had chemistry. I believe them. They're both he's, quirky people in real it's, life. It's, it's Dharma and Greg. He's the serious one, and she's the quirky, artisty, over the top. Person. Good enough. It's like a Dharma and Greg, uh, opposites attract, free spirit with controlled type A personality person. So the next morning after the mishap in the tents where Nick does not want to sleep with her because she he thinks she's doing it for charity work, he disappears into the night with the artifact. Oh yes. They wake okay, up. That's and and, yes. and Sylvia's like, I know it. He double crossed us. He took off without us. And so and um, Harry's like, No, no, no. He's a good guy. So he comes back, That's looking true. very bewildered. And he's like, We have to go. I guess there's a kind of is is this where there's a conflict between Sylvia doesn't want them to go. Louise is telling her, Sylvia not to not to go. It's dangerous. Yes, she's and pulling her. Nick in the is like, direction. Nick needs to go because he's driven. So there's a part which is so funny. He's like, I don't think it has anything to do with Louise or whatever it's the sexual tension you have between each other because you didn't have sex last night basically he's like i'm gonna turn around and give you a few <laughs> Yo, minutes that's right that's right and you I can forgot. relieve the tension he starts going "Ooh, ah he starts singing this like suit and nick is like you can turn around now he's like oh nick <laughs> I forgot. Eric's like, Nick, we have a problem. You have a problem here. It only took you that time. And she's like, no, we didn't do anything. Directly right here is when, right? This is when they are confronted by Ingo and Dr. Harrison Steele. And a another guy who we forgot to mention in the beginning when they first got it's off the, a, yeah. was, for, like, it was a Martians. guy posing as like a, you know, he pulled open his, his jacket. It had like beads and jewelry and watches and stuff. It's, and uh, Harry like shoved, to, like gave him money. It was just like, like almost like he was a dumb native and just was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't no care way. for, I didn't care for because I thought that was a little bit rude. But Sylvia re recognizes him. She's like, you're that dumb. But she even calls him something like that. You're that dumb smirch. That's a New Yorker thing because think about it. In the 80s, you remember every 80 movie where like if, it, if the person was like a, a person who was like a shysty or a thief always opened their jacket and had like, yes, of course. Like jewelry and watches hanging from their jacket that you could buy or sunglasses or something. It's so funny because in the Descendants movie, which is a Disney movie, Movie, they're in the place called the Isle of the Lost, which is like a place where all the bad people live. And the guy opens his jacket to like sell stuff. So now it'd be wa probably eye watches and eye. So now, unfortunately, at some point, go for it. They're they well, confronted with Ingo these three people. Throws a knife into Harry's back and kills him. Sylvia is extremely upset about this. She really likes Harry. He's like he would have been alive if it wasn't for you, you piece of shit. That's what it was actually. Them. So they're forcing them to go on now to find this because they realize they have the two best psychics. Plus Ingo. Yes, that's true. Nick is already has this connection to it. And they're hoping that if he can touch it between that and Louise that they're hoping that they could decipher this artifact, which we should mention earlier was a giant triangle, pyramid, glowing pyramid object. That was all part of that five minute flute montage. <laughs> and there was no Mumra? No, it wasn't black pyramid. It was a gold glowing pyramid. Okay. So upon arriving, the group discovers an ancient pyramid shaped structure with mystic carving. Sylvia translates them and they appear to reveal that the location was built by an ancient alien race, which I believe, who has embodied all of the psychic energy in the world into this pyramid. So this is when, I mean, David does this amazing, but I think Sylvia starts talking like Greedo from Star Wars with Han Solo in the But she's Tantino. like, yes, Greedo. As a matter of fact, I was just going to see your boss. Tell Java that I've got his money. Going somewhere solo? What? <laughs> so you also find out that <laughs> that Dr. Steele wants to use the psychic energy to bring about oh, worldwide yes. change. In other words, he's he is disgusted by humanity, it seems like, and he wants to kill people off or control the world, basically. Mm, mm, mm. And the two, Nick and Sylvia, try to basically say, you have it now, we can leave. We, you know, we don't care. He's like, you'll come back to try to get the energy. And he's But there is a point where Sylvia gets in trance. Well, yes, this is actually... When she, she's doing that... She uses translation the translation that, that's from Louise... 
Ingo attempts to decipher the secret to harnessing the energy, but before he can, Sylvie's hands land on the pyramid and allows the dangerous force to flow through her. She's go doing all this, but Nick wants to stop her because he thinks... She's going to look what happened to Harry's friend. Yes, the, yes. Died in the hospital. But this is the thing. that so they decide that they are going to... One of them is going to go to get help and the other is going to stay. So Nick says he's going to stay with a gun that he gets. Like, they're able to get the better hands of this group. And he's has a gun pointed on them, so Sylvie is gonna run to get help, but it doesn't work out that way. I know she goes back to save him, but somehow Nick is taken over by... Someone hits Nick? Was it the third person? I'm, I don't remember exactly. So basically, they get the better of the group for a little while. They have a gun on them. Sylvia goes for help. I don't... Does Louise want her to go back because Nick's in trouble? Or I don't remember exactly, but it ends up that Cindy Lauper ends up going back to where everybody is. She ends up going into, going into an astral projection thing. Yeah, so they're, like, taken separate, right? And Nick yep. is about to be killed. Sylvia does her astral projection and she says, Louise, even if she can't get back into her body, she wants to be able to try to help Nick somehow. And say goodbye if she has to. So she does get back into her body. So they get back to the pyramid and she's able, she kills their captives and is nearly killed herself when she harnesses this power, Sylvia. Louise... She puts her hand directly on the pyramid to stop what's going on. Yes, Louise is there and Nick is like, Louise, help her. Somehow she loses her connection to Louise so either Louise's spirit is completely decimated or she moves on I think she, she moved. I think she moved on so what happened, yeah, so what happens is in the Cindy Lauper or Sylvia's last attempt to rescue them from their captor she puts her hand directly onto the glowing pyramid and starts harnessing the power which she uses the power to basically smite all the people um, yes. and starts the and then starts the, uh, all the, the ruins are starting to fall apart and break apart Dr. Steele runs away and gets crushed by rocks. Nick tells Louise to help Sylvia because he knows she's going to die. So Louise does something, like I think she does pull her away, so to speak, from the pyramid yes. before, she's, before she dies. And uh, But she's left powerless. She can't she can't sense Louise anymore is gone. After that, the two turn to their hotel again. Battered Which is so rude. fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they thankful they the that they played a part in releasing a dangerous force. Later that night, they reconvene in Sylvia's room and and bring to fruition a romantic flirtation that has permeated the film. Oh, well. I like this because there's a glass in Sylvia's room that Nick picks up and he's like, you have feelings for me, you know, there's you're a, in love with the, me. But he, but he says it like, there's a girl, the woman who touched this glass is in love with the man, but she can't say it. And blah, she really goes on, but she really wants to be with him, but it's hard for her and blah, blah. And she's been hurt before. He goes in this whole thing and she's like, Nick, I didn't touch <laughs> that glass. And that was the, like so The wait sad. is in love with you, evidently. Yeah. And the, But then she's like, but I did touch this glass. And she hands him a glass that she's touched. And then, before they can make love, however, Sylvia hits her head on the headboard and reveals that a spirit guide has re-entered her life. It is not Louise, however, but the ghost of Harry. Was this setting up a potential sequel? I don't know. She's like, HARRY! They, yeah, they look, she looks at the screen and is like, Harry! Which is so funny because this is Jeff Goldblum's character drops her on the headboard and she hits her head, which is, <laughs> is so unromantic, but so much like that nerdy kind yeah. of, you would think that he's awkward, even though he picks her up in, in his romantic way to take her to the bed and he hits her on the head. I think that's we've all been in that. We've, we've, we've all lava. done silly things like that and laughed to ourselves, but that's all part of the adventure. But still, it's it's funny. And then she gets hits her head and she's, Harry! And they all look up. It's really cute. It's a I cute ending. Cute ending. I wish there was more, but I want to read this. Vibes was panned by critics. It has an approval of 14% based on 22 reviews. Robert Ebert gave the film one out of four and wrote, movies like Vibes appear and disappear like fireflies in the dull days of summer. Nobody sees them and nobody remembers them. Wow, this was back, I mean, this was when the movie came out, but That's just hatred. What hate? <laughs> Washington Post wrote, I don't know how Ron Howard was involved in this, but they question Ron Howard's judgment for involving himself with the production, writing Ron Howard must have been in trance when he agreed to back this project. The movie was described as being romancing the stone, the Ghostbusters in the Temple of Doom, and was originally meant to star Lauper and Dan Aykroyd. Lauper said, I wanted to do a movie for so long, but I didn't want to do a typical airhead version of what Hollywood thinks a woman is, and I didn't want to do an ultra-serious La Femme film either. The character I play 
portraying in this film, Sylvia, is a kind of girl who's very conscious of her appearance and always wants to look good. But unfortunately, her favorite color is leopard skin. She definitely is kooky, but she's different from my pop persona. And then Aykroyd met with Lauper and decided he did not want to do the film with her. Columbia Pictures stood by Lauper and then Jeff Goldblum replaced Aykroyd. Filming started in April 1987 in Ecuador. After three weeks, the unit transferred to Los Angeles for the rest of the shoot over nine weeks. And then, I remember this, in 2009, Cindy Lauper played a character on Bones as a no-nonsense, reliable psychic who would help them and the FBI solve cases. So I think that's like a, a little cute callback to her character in this movie. I think she had like about three or four episodes on Bones. That's pretty cool. Cindy Lauper wrote, I never wear clothes like this, she protested. This stuff is way too subtle for me. The costumes <laughs> in the film. So, wow. Subtle wow, maybe wow. by color, not by, tr like, like. Yes, shortness. yeah, because Sylvia does have a fun wardrobe on it in this movie. So, I have to say, I think it still holds up for what it is. I loved it. So, again, we want to thank Joe for suggesting this movie. Thank you, Joe, so much. It really gave me a really great, great nostalgia. It really gave me, I, I really hope you enjoyed the podcast. It was it was a pleasure making it. It was a pleasure rewatching this movie. Thank you guys, whoever is participating and enjoys our little banter back and forth. And we got to do a movie where everyone had New York accents finally, or or at least Cindy Lauper had her accent, and she was able to do all these unusual things. It wasn't Grease too, no, Rizzo. Just wait. I'm sure we'll find more. That was this week's Radical Retro Rewind podcast. You can find David at Universal Appeal 2020, all one word on Instagram and the Radical Retro Rewind podcast, one word, on Instagram. You can also find us on YouTube. As of recording, we are almost to 100 subscribers. It doesn't seem a lot, but for us, it's a great start. We're we're excited to have 100 subscribers. We're really happy, and um, we hope everybody's really enjoying it. Thank you, guys. Bye! Bye.